few concept cars have captivated the world to a point where people remember them years afterwards. The Volkswagen W12 is definitely one of them, the BMW Natska C2 is another, and who could forget the eloquent Lamborghini four-seater called the Estoc. But I think there's one concept car that rises to the top, and it came from the good old Blue Oval. The Ford GT90 was supposed to be the successor to the GT40, a 90s supercar that would reign supreme over everyone else in the performance car game. But sadly, its geometric design never got past the concept car stage, despite Ford producing a fully functioning test car and making plenty noise that the project would get over the line. So what happened to it? Let's first digest exactly what the GT90 was set out to be. Back in the 1990s, car manufacturers were obsessed with top speed, and the executives at Ford decided they wanted a piece of that pie. The Ferrari F40 had achieved 200 miles an hour, then the Jaguar XJ220 came along and upped things to 213, and then McLaren swung in with the F1 and blew everyone else into the weeds. And so the McLaren was Ford's target. The GT90 was setting out to be the fastest production car in the world. The recipe for the car was as follows. Ford decided to dive into their parts bin and as they owned Jaguar at the time, they used the XJ220 as a base. The GT90 has the basic chassis, suspension and gearbox from the Jag. Instead of using the XJ220's V6 twin turbo engine, however, they went for a Ford modular V8 cut two cylinders off to make it a V6, and then doubled it to make a V12. Oh, and then they strapped four Garrett turbos to it to form a 5.9 litre quad turbo V12, potentially taking inspiration from Bugatti's EB110. The bodywork was carbon fibre, and the design was to kick off Ford's new edge design direction. I wouldn't say it's pretty, but I do think this design has aged really well and the whole car came in at 1,451 kilograms. The engine was supposedly good for 720 horsepower and could get the car from 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds, but all they really cared about was the top speed, a theoretical 253 miles an hour, a speed subsequently achieved by the original Veyron about 10 years later. Despite weighing 300 kilograms heavier than the McLaren, apparently the 100 horsepower gain was enough to see the GT90 become the fastest production car back in 1995. I doubt that however, because we've seen how much horsepower it takes to reach 250 unless your aero is absolutely on point, and I don't think this design would have been capable of it, but we never got to find out. After being revealed at the 1995 Detroit Motor Show, it looked like Ford were going to put the car into production. They even hinted at a price tag of just $150,000, massively undercutting any of the other supercar competitors. And they did make a fully functioning test car, and they gave it to certain journalists to give it a drive, including Jeremy Clarkson. Sadly, the turbochargers were bypassed on the car meaning that the V12 was essentially naturally aspirated and only created 400 horsepower, so the car wouldn't have felt as quick as it should have. The reason for that was that the car was developed by Ford's SVT department in just six months, and at a relatively cheap R&D budget of just $3 million, and the engineers simply didn't believe that the rest of the car's components could deal with the power from that quad turbo. The press and public waited for Ford to announce a production version of the car, but that press release never came. Instead, Ford backtracked, saying that the GT90 was only ever a testbed for new tech and a poster boy for their new edge design language. To be honest, there is evidence that this car was just a bit of design fun. The tyres had GT90 etched into the treads. I can't imagine that was optimal for performance. Despite going as far as mentioning pricing and developing a fully moving car, we'd have to wait until 2005 for Ford to take the plunge and create a supercar successor to the GT40, the legendary supercharged GT. But just look at this thing. 
This car was developed at the same time as my Mondeo ST. The GT90 was otherworldly. Even up against its other supercar competitors of the time, it was so far ahead of the game in terms of design. The Diablo and the EB110 look ancient in comparison to this thing. Sadly, the place that most people have come across this Ford is in Need for Speed 2. But where is the actual car? Well, Ford put it up for auction in 2009, but that all fell through and the car somehow fell into the hands of Brent Hayex Museum in Oklahoma, which is where the car currently resides. Ford, we're disappointed in you, but there is one way you can make it up to us. Take the current Ford GT, stretch it slightly, slap a shark fin on it and put electric motors on the front axle and enter it into the Le Mans hypercar class. Actually, I've done a full video on what that car would look like, the link to which is in the description below. Another thing that's in the description is a link to these t-shirts. I wore this a couple of videos ago and you guys seem to really like this design, so thank you to everyone that ordered one. And if you fancy one, hey Bim, inspired by James May's recent Amazon show, click the link down below and get yourself one. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe.